also has a lot of options to do uh, some virt virtual PBX um, features. But again, it's just a, it's only talk SIP, so we don't really um, engage media a lot in open SIPs. Uh, probably most of you know how a SIP uh, a SIP call looks like. So let me see. Okay, so we have uh, Alice, Bob, and uh, an open SIP server uh, usually inside it. When you start the call, you send an invite to open SIPs, and but since we don't handle media at all, we just forward it to Bob with the very same SDP. So here we have SDP of Alice, SDP on Alex on the other hand. When we get the 200 uh, OK back, Bob advertises his own uh, SDP, so it's SDPB, which we um, send further to Alice and then acknowledge the call. This means that Alice uh, knows only uh, Bob's SDP and Bob only knows Alice's SDP, right? Which means that uh, the call flows look something like this. So we have SIP going through open SIPs, but the RTP is going directly through the, uh, through the clients. In terms of core recording, that's a bumper, right? At least from the uh, platform perspective, because call recording can only be done on the endpoints. So it's only Alice or Bob that can actually do call recording because uh, there's no media going through uh, our platform. Well, unless you are, you are an ITSP and you can tap everything and you can get anything, but uh, it's not that simple anyways. So in terms of call recording, uh, make sure that before starting to record your calls, you read the laws that are uh, and the regulations that uh, are in your country. Because uh, even in e uh, if you and both in EU and e US, there are various uh, laws. Uh, it depends on the country that you are in, the district, and so forth. Uh, but usually, you are allowed to uh, do call recording if um, if you get the consent of your uh, of your uh, participants, so for example, if you play an announcement saying that the call is being recorded, then uh, you are allowed to do it. Uh, call recording is very useful for your business because um, this way you can provide evidence of uh, of your transactions. For example, if you are doing some bank related. Uh, services. You can also ensure the quality of your services, having uh, listening to certain problems that are that happen during the during the day, you can uh, figure out and pinpoint different problems. And it, you can also check that uh, your employers comply with legal regulatory procedures. So it's very, uh, it's basically a requirement for um, for your business to do call recording. I know there are a couple of countries that even require for every call to be recorded and kept for a couple of uh, years so that they can, in case of, uh, I don't know, uh, national uh, uh, issues, they can uh, listen to some recording. So um, that's that might be a requirement for the government. But since OpenSIS does not handle media, so India um, usually media goes uh, end to end, we have to s add some sort of hop inside the media path. And these are called media relays. So in this setup, um, instead of going the RTP from uh, Alice to Bob, we just add an, a media hop, which will basically be controlled by OpenSIPs. Whenever a call starts, OpenSIPs will also start an RTP session. And from that point, RTP will always go through uh, through the media relay. The SIP uh, flow looks something like this. So you send an invite with SDP Alice, but you advertise the media relay's SDP. So here we don't have Alice's SDP. We have the media relay SDP. On the way back, the 200 OK contains Bob SDP, but we advertise the media relay associated with Bob in the 200 OK and then acknowledge the call. Therefore, uh, Alice will see uh, the, uh, the SDP of the media relay, and Bob, the same, sees the uh, SDP of the media relay associated with Alice. Uh, probably you've heard uh, of uh, some uh, media proxies. Uh, it's RTP proxy, RTP engine. Uh, it's also media proxy. I didn't put it on the slide because it doesn't have any um, call recording uh, capabilities. So we'll just talk about these two, or at least not that I'm aware of. Um, 
the media servers are controlled by the C proxy, and as you've seen previously, they advertise themselves as the RTP uh, endpoints. And what they do when they uh, receive those um, those RTP packets, they simply rely it from one side to the other, uh, making sure that the uh, that the customers hear each other. That's also useful in NAT scenarios, and you probably use it for NAT scenarios, but not uh, not uh, necessarily. Um, both projects, both RTP proxy and RTP engine, can actually play uh, some RTP packets if they are in the path of the of the media call. They can uh, play music on hold or announcements or some ring back tone if if it's required. But the the important thing is that they have access to the uh, entire RTP payload because that's how we basically can get the RTP and uh, record it. In OpenSIP's configuration, it is very simple. So all you have to do for both projects is engage the media, engage RTP proxy or RTP engine in the call, and whenever uh, you want to start uh, recording, just uh, call the uh, start recording RTP proxy or RTP engine start recording function, and it will ho all happen on the RTP proxy and RTP engine servers. Uh, you can also have some metadata you can also uh, always uh, annotate your uh, recordings with some metadata so that you can correlate it back with CDRs or call flows or whatever you need. And a very nice feature that uh, RTP Engine has, it's also to do transcoding. So you can use the media relay to do transcoding in case your uh, two endpoints uh, don't understand. You can also do, for example, SRTP to RTP conversions or uh, as stuff like that, so it's, uh, RTP engine is quite powerful. I think our, our RTP proxy al also has it on its roadmap, but uh, I'm not sure when it's going to be released. Um, so, we have the media proxies, we have the RTP. What the, uh, each proxy does is uh, to dump it in a file. Um, both of projects can also stream it to a different RTP endpoint so that you can listen real time, but that's not that easy because um, uh, it's, it's not that easy to correlate the RTP traffic with a call in real time. Therefore, the file is always uh, is basically available only at the end of the call. Although you can again tap in, in uh, during the call and uh, and um, listen to uh, what's discussed. Um, Again, uh, uh, the C proxy is the one that knows information about the profiles of the user, so he's the one that can annotate and add uh, extra metadata in, uh, inside the uh, call recording. And uh, the formats that the files are dumped into are raw, uh, raw RTP packets or a pickup packet for a pickup um, file for RTP proxy that you can simply open with Wireshark and play it in, uh, immediately. If you get raw, you'll have to multiplex the, um, the two uh, uh, streams and then convert them to, uh, decode them and convert them to one of MP3 or uh, WAV file in order to listen them, but that's possible as well. With RTP Engine, we have a couple of different formats. We also have PCAP, but we can also generate directly MP3 or, uh, or WAV files. In terms of performance, um, that might be a bit tricky. So I was saying earlier that OpenSIPs can handle millions uh, of calls, si of simultaneous calls. That's because uh, during, a simul uh, during a call, OpenSIPs is not actually involved because it doesn't handle any media. However, the media proxy does. So if it does, then it has to scale a bit differently. That's because uh, during uh, RTP, it uh, consumes a lot of bandwidth and CPU. That's why it's advisable to always have multiple instances. And it's a very good idea in order to increase the performance or the quality of your services to have them as close as possible to your uh, customers. So it's a, uh, it's a good idea to locate um, instances diff in different places as, uh, in order to reach all your customers and ensure a low, uh, a low, uh, low latency b uh, link. Um, 
again, uh, if you are doing core recording, then all the files will be written on a storage. So you have to make sure that your storage that you are using either uh, be it network file storage or uh, local storage, it has to be very fast because otherwise you will end up in uh, I/O bottlenecks coming from your uh, from your disk. So that might affect your performance, uh, the performance of your calls. Um, a very nice feature that RTP Engine has is uh, in kernel uh, forwarding support and recording. So that's that gives him uh, a, uh, an extra um, an extra point for using it because uh, having them in kernel, you avoid a lot of context switches and therefore the, the relaying is way faster and recording. Uh, to do that, you have to install a separate uh, recording daemon which comes with the package. It, it's, it's also open source, so you don't have to worry about that. You can also, from OpenSIFS, you can also balance the, uh, prox the media proxy that you are using um, but first of all, you have to make sure that you have enough resources for all your concurrent calls and that you monitor every single instance uh, so that you can do a fair balancing. And a very nice feature that we've added in the last OpenSIPS version is the possibility to migrate ongoing calls from one media server to another. And not only, we'll, see, we'll talk about that uh, a bit later. Another idea of doing call recording that I will not insist of is using media servers such as FreeSage or Asterisk. Basically what you can do is send the call, loop it through the media server, send it back to OpenSIPS and terminate it to the customer. So this way, as you can see, uh, the media server will act as a back-to-back. -back. So he will receive all the RTP traffic and it's fairly easy to activate call recording on either FreeSwitch uh, or uh, asterisk. So the idea is you have to loop the calls uh, and just enable the call recording uh, capabilities in, uh, in the media server. This way you can add enhanced features such as music on hold, ring back, as we've talked earlier, announcements, but you can also do other more advanced stuff such as bar gene in case you are doing a call center or something like that. So you can't do that with uh, a media relay. Um, how, uh, doing this is basically an active call recording. It's called active because you have to modify your uh, platform in order to uh, add extra media servers uh, that do the uh, recording. And now we are talking, uh, we are going to talk about a different solution, a uh, Seabrex solution, which is, uh, which is very useful and it's a passive uh, call recording um, feature. Basically, f f let's, start, uh, let's first start to, t uh, to discuss about CBREC. So basically, CBREC is a standard. Uh, it's defined in RFC 7865 uh, and 7866. And it's a way to organize both metadata and RTP to a third party, uh, whatever that is, in a standard way. Uh, so that that third party can listen to uh, to conversation uh, conversations. Uh, it's based on SIP. Uh, it uses SIP to start uh, to start the call recording and stop it, but also uses uh, some XML bodies in order to exchange information about uh, or to advertise information uh, about the participants of the call. Everything is real time, so you can listen to a call in real time. And again, it's passive call recording, that, uh, meaning that you don't really have to uh, modify your infrastructure to, to add it. Getting back to the previous, uh, to the previous scheme, so we had Alice talking to Bob and RTP flowing through, uh, through the media relay, but now we have a third entity, we have the CBREC, right? So he needs two things, he needs to know who's talking about, who's talking in this call, and what are they talking about, so the RTP payload. So how it's, this is done, so there's a third entity, whenever the call starts, OpenSIPS uh, sends a call over here and instructs the media relay to send RTP over here. Going a bit in depth, uh, in this scenario, OpenSIS acts as a back-to-back -back, uh, because it has to send, where is it? Uh, it has to send an invite here starting the call. The CBREC 
entity, whoever that is, I don't know, NSA, whatever, <laughs> uh, can decide whether they want to start uh, to record that call or not. Uh, if they want to record it, they will send a 200 OK, saying where to, uh, to send the media. Otherwise, they can send a, for a uh, I don't know, 404 not found or 403 forbidden. And that means that they don't really want to uh, record that call. So you don't really have to do um, anything. But if OpenSIFS gets a 200 OK, he will instruct the media server to duplicate the traffic down to CBREC. So this way, the CBREC, the call recorder, has both um, participants' information as well as um, RTP. Uh, in this scenario, participants are not necessarily aware that they are recorded unless the law regulations enforce you to do so. So unless the, uh, you have some sort of announcement saying that you will be recorded if you want to continue this conversation, you have to, uh, if you don't want to continue this conversation, you can close uh, the call. So as I was saying, OpenSIFS acts as a back-to-back -back user agent. Um, he's the one that's controlling the RTP proxy uh, in order to uh, to send media or stop sending media to, to the endpoint. And it's also able to terminate the recording in case the um, recorder decides so. So for example, if I start recording, I listen for a couple of minutes and I decide it's no, no interest uh, to continue, then uh, I can simply uh, turn off the recording. So that can be done as well. Um, and you can, we, you can also have so all sorts of logic to do failover in case one of the recorder is down. So for example, if you have a third party recorder that has two different entities, you can do either load balancing or failover uh, to them. So it's your decision. So these are, these are basically the, uh, the um, solutions that you can do uh, using OpenSIFS, you can do call recording, and there are quite a uh, few. Um, I will focus mainly on the ones that use media relay. That's because uh, it's the simplest one and probably the, the most frequently used one. Um, now, let's see what happens or why do we need me media failover. Usually, uh, all actually not usually all the uh, clients all the uh, CP endpoints that I've uh, worked with whenever they stop receiving media what do they do? Do they try to renegotiate something? Do they do anything? No, they simply close the call, right? So if I don't hear you in the f in the next few moments, I will uh, turn off the call. Well, we don't really want to do that. And in order to prevent this kind of scenarios to happen, we have to have some sort of high availability at the media level. Um, so unfortunately, RTP proxy doesn't offer any, uh, any solutions to do that. So they simply, uh, if the RTP proxy goes down, the call simply will, uh, will be lost. However, RTP engine offers some, uh, some possibilities to use Redis uh, to exchange uh, information about sessions and have uh, a hot backup uh, that uh, on a different machine and use a floating IP between them. So a virtual IP between them that can be moved in case one goes down and the other one uh, is uh, can handle the calls. So there is some sort of high availability for uh, Redis. However, uh, I find it uh, a problem, the fact that it's uh, an active backup scheme, so uh, basically you have to have a hot backup. This means that you have to have resources pre-allocated that are not actually used, but they might be used in case of a failover. So um, I find this a bit a waste of resources, uh, uh, except if you do have a lot of resources to spend, that's fine. That got us thinking about an active-active scheme. So what can, how can we ensure an active-active scheme uh, using failover? So that if, you manage to, if we manage to do that, we will take all, uh, the benefit of all our resources, so we don't have to spend any more or less uh, unless we really need it. And um, 
the, the key to this solution is to do monitoring on the media server and understand if it reaches the limit, if it's going to cra if it crashed actually, and so forth and so on. And in case any of these events happen, to do a renegotiation of the of the media path. Uh, in this case, you will see the proxy has to uh, act as a B2B user agent, as a back-to-back -back user agent. So let's get back to a different scenario where we have open SIPs in the middle, but we are now using two media relays. And we have here a call that starts uh, from, again, from Alice to Bob. Um, and in this call, you will see that Alice will receive the, the media relays uh, IP of media relay one, and Bob uh, will receive the same, but associated with uh, Alice's stream. In this, in this case, uh, we, our assumption is that the media relay goes down, but our monitoring system catches this event and it will trigger re a renegotiation of the media path. How this works, basically, it will inform uh, the monitoring system will inform OpenSIPS to send an invite with a different media relay in the path so that Alice um, learns a new uh, media relay and when the 200 OK is sent back to OpenSIPS, it's converted to a re-invite on the other side with the new uh, SDP coming from Media Relay 2 so that Bob will learn um, the Media Relay 2 uh, IPs and ports. And of course, uh, we complete the session like so. There's, a, there's another ACK here, but it can be seen because I didn't have enough, uh, enough um, uh, space. So basically, uh, in this scheme, Alice will have the same, uh, will go through the same open SIFS proxy, so the signaling, the call uh, is, is, is still established, but the media will go through on different paths. But the call is uh, working as expected, with more or less no downtime. It only depends on how soon you, you manage to figure out that your RTP uh, proxy or engine is going, is down. So that's the only, uh, that's the only latency added. Um, in order to do that, we developed a new uh, MI function in OpenSIPS that is able to trigger uh, in-dialogue messages. And we figure out uh, during time that this is quite a very powerful command. So all you have to do is when, whenever your monitoring system detects a failure, you just need to say, well, send, uh, send a re-invite in this dialogue um, but that's not, all we, uh, that's not the only thing that you can do. You can, for example, use the very same function due to the fact that it allows you to select both the method and the body of the message. You can use it to convert uh, uh, in-band in uh, in DTMF signals, so RTP uh, sig uh, signals, to SIP-based DTMF. This is very useful for uh, carriers that don't actually support in-band uh, DTMF but they, uh, and they require in, inbound DTMS. So it's very useful to, to use this function. You can always also use it to do dialog pinging and figure out if the, if the call, uh, the parties are still up, or if they are not, then you, you probably want to cut down the, the call in order to prevent, I don't know, 10 days CDRs or stuff like that. Um, a very nice feature that we've learned uh, about is that it can be used to move calls from a uh, working system, uh, actually from a failed uh, uh, OpenSIFS proxy to a different one. So this is also very useful uh, in order to move calls from one, uh, from one proxy to another and for media to another. So that's quite, uh, quite useful. Um, and it's very, very easy to use. So all you have to do is s uh, ask OpenSIS to send a sequential message inside the dialog, give him the parameters saying, uh, I want to re-invite the caller with invite method, uh, use the body that the call is, uh, the call is sent, so that uh, you don't really need to store it or take it from anywhere else. It, it's already inside OpenSIPS. And then OpenSIPS uh, handles uh, all the magic behind it. Um, so again, uh, you can. There's nothing more to do uh, unless you really want to engage a different media uh, inside the um, 
inside the call. In that case, you have to write some uh, to write inside OpenShift's uh, script. You have to write your own logic to select what uh, proxy you want to use from those available. Because if you don't do that, probably uh, OpenShift will choose the same one because. Uh, Basically, that's the way it should work. For example, you probably, you probably most of the time you want to use the same media proxy for re-invites, updates, and so forth and so on, unless the proxy is down. So if the proxy is down, it will select a different one. But if not, uh, you will have to do uh, your own logic inside the um, OpenSafe script. But it's not that hard. It's very, it's quite easy. Uh, bottom line, if you are going to do call recording in your platform and you need to do it, you first uh, suggest you, sh sh you find out what are the legal requirements inside your country because that might be something that can, uh, that can uh, be quite tricky because uh, it's different uh, from country to country. Make sure you compile a full list of the features um, that you are going to use because you probably you don't have problems with high availability or you can afford to lose calls then probably you don't want to look into high availability but if you need high availability for your calls then you can you should probably go to the, uh, to a certain solution if you want to do call recording if you want to do uh, if you want to do sorry uh, music on hold or if you want to have some sort of barge in uh, implementation in your uh, platform then you should probably go towards a media server because a media relay doesn't do that so there are a, a lot of um, a lot of things that you have to consider when uh, building your call recording solution or if there are uh, enforcements from your uh, from your uh, i don't know uh, government to duplicate uh, every session then you probably need a CBRAC anyways so you have to make sure that uh, you uh, you read the requirements of your uh, of your um, country and make sure you consider all the solutions available for uh, all the platform and like always prepa prepare for anything you won't know what hit you <laughs> not sure if you are already doing core recording but it's it's not that easy it's not that trivial that's straightforward okay so i was faster than i thought <laughs> if there are any other questions if there are any questions <laughs> On the CIPREC scenario, it looks like it requires a media server or relay that can fork the media. Can RTP proxy or RTP engine do that? What, what do you usually see deployed in that scenario? Both of them uh, can fork media. Uh, RTP proxy does it for a couple of years now. As far as I know, RTP engine added it a, a few months back or well, a year tops, not sure. Okay, thank you. But both of them uh, can, can fork media. There's one more question over there. Um, I'm curious about the active active uh, media relay version that you spoke about, and I'm curious about the speed of it because I'm assuming that OpenSIPS is checking these media relays with an options or something frequently to see if they're up or down. Uh, not necessarily. Um, basically, OpenSIPS uh, tries to send a command. One of them. And if it doesn't respond, then it will try a, a different one and disable the previous one. So that's how it works. But is it checking it all the time? So if there's a call that's ongoing, then how you, you need to kind of check it frequently? Uh, is no. that the case? No, we are not checking it. We rely on the fact that if I have a call, there will be another call that will need that instance. And that call will probably manage to figure out if that one, uh, if the... So if you have a low call volume, for example, yeah, uh, you may miss that the media relay is down, and uh, rerouting the call to a new one may take a while, and the caller on the call may have a blip like for a few seconds or something. You are absolutely right that, but you can always have a different uh, monitoring system. Yeah, of course, an I'm external just asking, one. Yeah, I'm uh, just curious. We are actually using uh, actively using external monitors that are s looping uh, or simulating calls every second just to make sure that. Uh, so in this case, the failover uh, will happen within a second. Oh I yeah. think Thanks. that's acceptable. Anyone else? We've got time for like one, maybe two more questions. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks. 
just a reminder, lunch is at 12.20, so in about four minutes down in the restaurant that we've had every meal in, actually. <laughs>